Well, g'day guys, and welcome to episode 11 of our off-grid travel series. I can't believe we're here at episode 11 already. We're anything but off grid at the moment. We are <laughs> at Cotton Tree Caravan Park having an awesome couple of weeks here while our 76 series gets built. I know you guys, so many of you out there are excited to see more of our 76 build. Uh, the next video on that will be coming out very shortly. It should be in the next week or so. So keep an eye out for that and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already so that you don't miss that one. So far in this series, we've covered off everything from water, power, uh, getting internet while off grid, uh, waste and toilets and food and a a whole heap of topics to help you guys get a better understanding of what you need to be thinking about and some things you need when you start to look at traveling off-grid, particularly for extended periods. Now, the off-grid space at the moment, as you probably notice, is absolutely booming. Um, everyone's looking to travel off-grid and a lot of people are trying to look at ways they can spend even longer off-grid and get out there into those awesome places around the country and camp up for an extended period of time. We're really excited to be in that space and we're constantly trying to uh, push the limits and test out new ideas as well as new products. So this video is gonna be all about some new ideas, some new products that are on the market uh, that we wanna share with you guys, which we think uh, are really gonna change the game when it comes to extending those periods off grid. Now, as with this entire series, uh, our mates at Everything Caravan and Camping have given us a $100 voucher to give away. Uh, congratulations, firstly, to Janice South from our previous video, our all about waste and composting toilets. Um, Janice, you've won a $100 voucher. We've left a comment on your comment on our video, but if you want to send me an email, Simon at thelifestylepioneers.com, I'll let you know how you can uh, claim your prize. So congratulations for that. If you'd like to enter the competition to win the $100 voucher, this will be the second last one we're giving away. The next video will be the last one in the series. So don't miss your chance to win that. All you need to do, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below on this video and let us know that you've been over and signed up to the Everything Caravan In Camping newsletter. There'll be a link for that in the description below and everything that we talk about in this video, there will be links for all of it in the description below. Uh, we do have a few discounts and things like that for you guys available on some of the products we're talking about in this video. All right, now episode 12, the final in this off-grid travel series is going to be a live on YouTube. So make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Keep an eye out for an announcement there as well as the Everything Caravan and Camping Facebook group. There'll be an announcement there uh, to let you guys know when that is. Uh, and we're gonna be answering all your questions about off-grid travel. So get together your questions, Turn up on the on the YouTube live and and hit us up. Let us know what your questions are. We can't wait to uh, to share that with you all. And the best question on the YouTube live will win that final hundred dollar voucher from our mates at Everything Caravan and Camping. So exciting times, awesome stuff coming up, as well as obviously that seventy six content, like I said. Uh, and then we're going to get out back out traveling and actually get off grid ourselves and go right across the country. We're heading to WA again, and cannot wait to share the journey over there with you. All right, guys, that's enough of me yabbering. Let's dive into it. Now, earlier in this series, we did a video about how to get internet off grid. And for the first couple of years of our trip, we relied on this thing here, which is the Netgear Nighthawk modem. This is a four and 5G modem that uses uh, the mobile network from Telstra to give you data um, and a Wi-Fi network. We compared that to just running a hotspot off your mobile phone and of course, Starlink. Now at the time, we'd only used Starlink for a couple of months and we've now used it for a lot longer um, and a lot more locations and understand a lot better its limitations as well as its advantages. But something else that came off the back of that video was a few of you suggested that we check out the Cowfish Van Connect system. And we did exactly that and actually got one installed into our new caravan. So we we ordered the Van Connect, uh, which is this device up here in this cupboard, uh, along with the uh, rooftop antenna that Cowfish sell. So this will come with uh, antennas to connect to a 4 and 5G network in a similar way to what the Netgear does, uh, but it also has, you can buy it with that rooftop antenna which replaces those internal antennas and gives you a far better uh, connection and a lot more stable uh, reception from that 4 and 5G network. That has been 
Absolutely awesome. Uh, convenience wise, the biggest advantage of it over the Netgear and uh, Nighthawk that we were running, to get a good signal from this, we were putting up a six meter aluminium mast uh, with a directional antenna on it to get a decent connection. Otherwise, the connection is only slightly better than your mobile phone, uh, which is a bit of mucking around to set up, but worked really well when we did. The advantage of this is that it's installed uh, permanently in the van, it's got a permanent 12 volt supply, and it gives us a Wi-Fi network 24 seven, no matter what. Um, as long as we've got that 4 and 5G connection. There's no setup, no pack up. It's just super simple, which we absolutely love that side of it. That rooftop antenna is also a Wi-Fi uh, emitting antenna. So it gives us a huge Wi-Fi network around the van when we're at camp. And that Wi-Fi network will also reach to the car when we're traveling. We really, really like it. One of the biggest downsides is probably its biggest upside um, in that it is permanently mounted. So if you want a portable solution, um, something like the Netgear Night Nighthawk is probably still your better option. Uh, but if you want super simple with no setup, no pack up and just works, um, we really like the Van Connect for that. Some other cool features that it has is that you can connect a hard drive to it and that will act almost like a server on your Wi-Fi network. So you can put uh, files on there, images, videos, etc., and they can be accessed by any device on the network. Now we run two laptops, two mobile phones, and the kids two iPads off the uh, network, no issues at all. So you can connect multiple devices and it, and it handles it really, really well. The only other criticism I'd have of the unit is just that the um, the only display it has is the, these LED lights you can see up in here. And they give you an indication of whether it's got a connection, that the Wi-Fi is on, and the strength of the signal that it's receiving. I've got to say, I probably prefer something like the LCD display that's in the Netgear Nighthawk, but to be honest, it's not something you're really looking at that often. Um, but yeah, that'd be a nice little improvement to it. But apart from that, it just works really well. We're really happy with it and would highly recommend it. I guess the big question then is, would you have this or would you have Starlink? Uh, well, I think really the ultimate solution is having both, is, which is exactly what we've got. But the downside to that is it is quite expensive because it is two different plans that you need to run. Um, obviously, we've got our Starlink plan uh, and then we've got a Telstra SIM card that goes into the Van Connect from Cowfish. So that does get quite expensive. The advantage to the Starlink is that we can pause it when we're uh, in areas where we don't need it and we just rely on this. If we can get a 5G connection, which we often can, and it's getting more and more common now to be able to get a 5G connection, a 5G connection through the Van Connect uh, crushes Starlink for, um, not just for speed, but for stability and reliability of the connection. Starlink, if you, unless you've got a really good view of the sky, has a habit of dropping out quite often. Um, and particularly if you want to do uh, Zoom calls and things like that, like Harrison does for his schooling, that can become a bit of an issue. Um, and for uploads as well, we find the upload speeds on 5G generally are far better um, than, than on Starlink. So as good as Starlink is, it is incredibly fast. It is amazing to be able to get internet um, irrespective of your location as far as geographical location. Uh, but just be aware that it does have some limitations when it comes to getting a connection. Uh, physical obstructions like trees, uh, the weather, clouds and rain, uh, and obviously buildings and things like that will affect its connection significantly. Um, it can be anywhere from getting no connection at all if there's heavy tree cover through to um, just limited connection where it will be really good for a little while and then drop out. And it may drop out for uh, a fraction of a second or up to a few seconds depending on how big and significant the obstruction is. So while yes, you can theoretically get internet anywhere in Australia with the Starlink, just be aware that uh, there may be some campsites and stuff where it just isn't suitable. Uh, and that's where the van connect really comes in if we've got four and 5g like at the moment we're hanging around on the east coast um, we've just got our starlink paused and we're just running purely off the van connect so depending on what your uh, data needs are and how um, how often you need data and how important it is to have data you might want to consider um, something other than starlink and because the, the other advantage to uh, a you know, a Telstra or a SIM card based service like the Van Connect is that uh, the plans tend to be a lot cheaper. You can bundle them with your mobile phone um, and the cost is a lot lower than Starlink. So although Starlink is really good, it, it definitely isn't for everyone and it does have its limitations. All right, you think right back to episode one of this off-grid series, it was all about water. And I think we all agree that water and access to water is by far the number one thing you need to take into consideration when you're starting to look at spending uh, a, an extended period of time off-grid. There's challenges with carrying enough water. and Obviously, water is quite heavy and quite bulky, so it can be difficult to carry enough water around the country. And as many of you would have seen in our walk around of our new caravan, we are putting in a desal 
system. So that's a reverse osmosis desalination unit. Um, I didn't give away too much, too many details there, and we've been absolutely swamped with people wanting to know more about it, wanting to see the installation, and wanting to know how well it works. Uh, Unfortunately, <laughs> it's not gonna be in this video. I still haven't got around to installing it yet, but it is on my list of things to do next week. So that video of installing the system will be coming out very soon. Uh, and then we're gonna to get to work and testing the unit. Those of you that are coming to the Pioneer Party uh, up at Barham Shores there at the campground there, if you haven't heard, we're having our first ever meetup. Uh, we're having a Pioneer Party up at Barham Shores campground from the 13th to the 15th of October. If you haven't booked uh, yet and you want to come along, jump and do that as soon as you can because sites are limited and they are booking fast. I'll leave a description, uh, sorry, I'll leave a link to be able to book the campsite in the description below. Uh, it's going to be an awesome weekend. We've got heaps planned and can't wait to see so many of you there that have already booked. While we're there at Barham, we are going to be running the desal system and you can all have a taste. You all get to have a taste of the water that comes out of it and, and see what you think. I can't wait to get it installed and get it tested. Um, it's been, yeah, we've been busy people. I've really wanted to have it installed by now and already testing it, but it just hasn't worked out. So that is a package that we got from the guys at Watermakers Australia. We ordered that um, quite some time ago. It's been sitting uh, in storage for a long time, waiting for its install. And like I said, that is coming up soon and we will be sharing that with you very shortly. Something else that we've done in the new van though, as far as our water supply goes, is for years we used a BEST water filter, B-E-S-T, uh, when filling our tanks. Uh, it's just an inline cartridge filter that filtered water through um, and supposedly took out all the nasties and things like that. The downside to it was, um, it, was um, it was in a white sort of PVC pipe almost. Impossible to see um, how dirty it was getting or how clogged up it was. Um, and yeah, never really knew how effective it really was um, at removing the, the nasties out of water. So while I was at the Brisbane Caravan Show, I got chatting to Robert from a little company called The Thirsty Nomad. So he started this little company called The Thirsty Nomad, making water filters and water filter solutions for caravans and RVs. And I had a really good chat with him and it, yeah, learned a lot about water filtration and that not all water filters are made equal. Um, so we decided to go ahead and grab ourselves what he calls the complete water treatment kit. Now what comes in this kit is uh, your cartridge filter the, to, for when you're filling your tank. So this cartridge filter will filter out all the nasties out of the water uh, going before it goes into your tanks. Um, what I like about this one is that it's clear. So you can see, if you can see in there, we've been using this for a couple of months, how dirty it's getting already. So you can see exactly how much, um, oh, there's a fair bit of condensation there. Let me pull the actual filter out. Hang on a second. You can't quite see in there. I might do this uh, near the sink. <laughs> so inside, and this is the other thing I like about it, is you can unscrew it. It's a bit hard to do with one hand. I should have got a tripod. So you can unscrew it and pull the actual filter out. Don't mind the drips of water on the floor. So you can see there, it started all white like that and that's the color it's uh, starting to go after just a couple of months of use. Now this is just from filling up from town water supplies and things like that, not from filling up with dodgy, from dodgy bores or anything like that, um, but these cartridges are replaceable. So it goes inside the plastic like that and you can replace these cartridges, which is a super handy feature, but also like I said, that with the casing being clear, you can keep an eye on how dirty your filter's getting. Now these, this uh, filter for filtering your water will actually filter bore water. Uh, it's a one micron filter, so it's incredibly fine and you can filter bore water and it removes all the nasties out and makes it good for drinking, which I just thought was incredible. These have been tested by universities and everything and they're certified. Um, they're, they're really, really cool. Um, removes all the rust, dust, sediments, all that out as well. Um, yeah, I, I just thought they were really, really cool. And as I said, we've been using it for a couple of months and it's insane the amount of taste um, that it removes from the water. It's obviously a lot better for you as well. And then being able to fill up with ball water uh, just means that it just opens up so many more water supply sources, particularly when you're traveling those more remote and, uh, and off-grid sites. The only downside to that is it does slow the flow significantly, so it will take a lot longer to fill your tanks, uh, which is just something to be aware of, but obviously that's because it's filtering out a heap of stuff out of the water. Now, the kit that we got comes with two spare um, filters for that as well. Uh, it comes with those click-on hose connections, so it's, uh, it's super easy to, to add into your system, um, and it comes with, yeah, these two uh, spare ones of these. 
But the kit also comes with an under the sink uh, filter. So I installed that under the sink filter uh, a little while ago when we were at Carnarvon Gorge. Uh, and that just goes into the water supply in the van so that it then filters again as it comes out of the tank. Now that protects you against things like growth in your tanks or any sediment that might've built up in your tanks, although you're filtering the water into your tanks, uh, just in case you do get any nasties or anything like that and just makes the drinking water supply uh, that much better. Now it goes through to our kitchen sink. Uh, I didn't worry about where it goes obviously to the washing machine and to everything like that. And it was just a super easy spot to mount it under there. So I thought that was really cool. I want to let you guys know about that um, to filter out that ball water. Now, each one of those cartridges, each one of these cartridges will do about three and a half thousand litres of water too. So um, yeah, while you do have to replace them, um, they, you do get plenty of use out of those. So that combined with our desalination system in the new van, uh, just really takes our water filtration and the, and mainly the sources that we can use for, for water uh, to a whole new level. We can, once we get the desal going, we can fill up in the ocean, rivers, creeks, bore water supply, uh, just about any water source will do uh, for us to be able to fill up our tanks, which just opens up not only being able to go to more remote areas, but just being able to stay so much longer once we're there. All right, let's talk power systems. Our old caravan had a 400 amp Enerdrive lithium system with a 720 watts of solar on the roof. If you watched our power system video, I went through in detail how that system was set up. In the new van, we've gone and done something a little bit different. Uh, if you've seen our walk around videos, you know we've done uh, a gasless caravan. So we've got no LPG gas at all in the caravan, full electric for cooking uh, and for, for all our needs and using a diesel uh, heater by Truma. So it's a Truma Combi, uh, it's called the six, Combi 6, which is the diesel version, uh, 6D it might be called actually, um, and that's a water heater and a space heater in one. Uh, so we only have two fuel sources now, power and diesel, and that's it. Now we've had a lot of questions about that, about um, how's that go, what's your contingency, everything like that. Um, so far after living in the van for four or five months, it's been really, really good, but we definitely are having to watch our power a little bit more carefully. Even though we've got a bigger system in this van, um, we've gone with an inner drive system again, and we've gone 600 amps of lithium, a little bit more storage because we don't have that backup of gas anymore, and we are using a lot more power, but we've got 1600 watts of solar, which feeds in through uh, two solar controllers and we also still have our DC DC charger obviously as well for getting power from the car now if someone said to me now would you do it again would you go gasless again I'm not 100% sure um, I probably would but I'm not sure it's for everyone uh, it does really remove without carrying a generator if you carried a generator as well um, I can see yeah, look, I can see it working a lot better there, but without a generator, we are extremely reliant on solar. If we don't get solar uh, for an extended period of time, we are in a bit of trouble and we do need to drive or find another way to regenerate the power into our batteries. So that's where having such a big solar system uh, was really imperative with that. If you're gonna go full electric, you need a lot of solar. The biggest mistake we see most people making with their 12 volt system is not in the batteries and not in the solar, it's in the charging system. You really need to make sure your charging system is up to scratch. And it was a big reason that we changed into the Titanium Caravan was being able to stick with Enerdrive gear. If you can only charge your batteries at 30 amps, like some can, you just can't get the power back into a big battery system quickly enough uh, to make it viable. Uh, being able to have two separate 40 amp solar chargers as well as our 40 amp DC DC charger and a 60 amp AC charger just gives us a huge amount of ability to be able to regenerate that battery power back in. That's all well and good if you've got want to go as far as we have with our off-grid system and do a massive built-in Enerdrive system like we've got. But something that you guys would have seen us do on the channel not that long ago was review this bad boy, which is the Bluetti EB3A. It's a little handy little power pack that lets you have a portable power source for charging up devices and things like that. It's got a little lithium battery built in as well as a small inverter, small DC charger and a solar controller. Really awesome. If you haven't seen that review, uh, head over and watch that. But what Bluetti have sent us now, um, after doing that review, uh, well, one of the things I brought up in that review was that um, one of their larger systems, because they have a variety of different sizes that, um, from Bluetti that you can get, uh, one of their bigger ones, like this one behind me, uh, would be really, really interesting to trial that as a an alternative to a dual battery system, or if you've got an older caravan that doesn't have a big lithium system, as an alternative to uh, ripping out and redoing an entire new system, um, or if you just want a portable source to be able to take between different vehicles or different setups, uh, tradies, things like that, to be able to take on site as well. If you need a handy little tax deduction, that might be a way to do that as well. 
Anyway, I, I'm getting carried away. I, I sort of spoke about all that in the EB3A review and Bluetti reached out to us and said, hey, well, would you like to try one of our bigger units and see if it does exactly what you think it's gonna do? And we said, yeah, sure, we'll try one out. So they sent us one of these. We're gonna be doing a review on this soon, but this is the uh, AC, so this is the AC200 Max from Bluetti. Now this one is a, it's a beast of a unit. I mean, just size comparison alone compared to the EB3A that we tested last time versus this big one here. Now, the difference is obviously in the size of the battery as well as the capabilities of the unit. So this one here is a 2048 watt hour unit, which is equivalent to about 170 amp uh, lithium battery at 12 volts. And it has a huge inverter as well. It has a 2200 watt inverter. That means that you can run multiple 240 volt appliances from the unit, um, as well as being able to run all your DC loads off it, like your USB chargers, your SIG sockets. There's a heap of different um, outlets off this. It also has a number of different ways to charge. Um, you can, you can charge it from your car as you're driving. You can also charge it, sorry, excuse the noise outside. You can charge it from your car while you're driving. You can charge it from solar as well, all built into one unit. It is really as simple as turning it on uh, and away you go. It has this really cool display here as well. Um, we're gonna be testing this out over the next couple of months, uh, giving it a real run for its money and trying it out in a number of different scenarios and seeing how it goes because I think this sort of technology and this idea is really gonna suit some people um, for off-grid and extended off-grid stays. Um, and then, like I said, there's a variety of different sizes you can get, so you can sort of tailor it to your needs and what devices you want to be able to run. But I really think this unit, if you want to be doing electric cooking and things like that, or running a fridge for an extended period of time off grid, um, this could be the answer to it. So keep an eye on the channel over the next couple of months. We'll be doing a couple of little um, more reviews and check-ins on this as we test it out. And we're going to be getting a couple of solar panels, portable solar panels as well, to test it out, charging it up off solar and seeing if we can just run a completely independent setup. I'm really excited to try that out and show you guys. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, the downsides to it is quite big and bulky and it's quite heavy. Um, but, you know, when you think about what's in this unit, the fact that it's a 170 amp battery plus an inverter plus a DC charger plus a solar controller, um, yeah, it's a pretty impressive unit that it's all packed into one little box like this. Really, really cool. Alrighty, a few ideas and some things to think about for your next adventure in there. Uh, as always, leave us a comment if you've got any questions or anything like that. And that is the first step in entering that competition to win yourself a hundred dollar voucher from Everything Caravaning and Camping. I did forget to mention too, where we're staying at the moment, Cotton Tree is one of the new ECC parks. So at the Brisbane Caravan Show earlier this year, ECC uh, announced ECC Parks, which is their own network of caravan parks around Australia and New Zealand. They've got over 40 parks in their network already and it's growing all the time. So yeah, go and check that out. You can book all those online. We're gonna enjoy our time here. I'm about to take the kids down the beach. Coming up on the channel, there is heaps more coming out. We've got heaps more travel content coming out. All that Land Cruiser 76 build content coming out. Uh, we've got the desal install. We went sailing on a catamaran a couple of weeks ago that we've got to show you guys as well. So heaps coming up. Uh, we're doing our best to get through all that content and can't wait to share a lot of that with you. Uh, I went through a heap of stuff in this video. All those links um, are in the description below. So if there's anything you can't find or want to know more about, uh, jump down to those links below and you'll be able to find it all from there. There's also the link there to sign up to the ECC newsletter, which is also what you need to do to enter that competition. Heaps coming up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of it. And don't forget to keep an eye out on our socials for the upcoming announcement on that YouTube live for the final in this off-grid travel series. Let us know if you've got any ideas for what should we do in the next series. All right, guys, either way, we'll see you guys next Sunday. See you then.